exciting episode of uh, Sandusky Park Bench. I am your host, Steve Hamm. I'm also a realtor here in Sandusky, Ohio. I'll get into how you can contact me and get be a part of the uh, the Park Bench uh, series. But today, my special guest is uh, Joe Barrier from uh, F Stop Imagery out of Fremont. Thanks. Um, thanks for coming by and being a part of this. I do really appreciate it. Yeah, uh, him and I do share some common things, like being in the military before and stuff like that. So we had a little bit of a nice discussion before this. But uh, Joe. I said thanks again for uh, being here, and uh, why don't you talk a little bit about yourself? Yeah, yeah thanks for having me. So, uh, like you mentioned, we've, we've got a little bit in common. Uh, yeah. I grew up in the military. My my parents both were in the Air Force, so I grew up abroad, bouncing around a little bit as a kid. Uh, so I, I guess it's kind of inevitable that once I grew up, uh, I joined the military myself. So <laughs> had a had a military career. Uh, that's where I met my wife, and she was from this small town called Fremont, Ohio. Hmm. And uh, just recently retired and said, I want to move back home. And we decided that, you know, after a, a, a life in the military, mm -hmm. um, moving around, your children don't really have a, a home. Right. They get really good at making new friends yeah. and getting established, but they don't have those deep roots. We yeah. decided we want to come home. Uh, so that's where we're at. We're here in Fremont, Ohio. Um, like I said, did about 10 or 11 years in the Air Force. Um, what did you do in the Air Force? So time? I was... An intelligence officer. And it sounds oh. great and yeah. you know very yeah. uh, very Hollywood. Yeah. But what it turns out is I'm great at research and public speaking. Oh. Uh, that's that's really the, the skill set. I can kind of see that with your delivery of your voice. You yeah, can yeah. be good at talking. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's what I did, um, and it was it was fantastic. The the military is really great at I at putting you in spots. You never knew you wanted to be in. Yeah. Um, everybody goes into the military wanting to be a, an army ranger or a fighter pilot. Yeah. And those are the, the big jobs that people think of in the military. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to be a police officer. My parents were both police officers. Oh, okay. so that's, I said, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I grew up and be like that. Yeah. Um, and the Air Force had different things. <laughs> of course. They scored really high on my. Um, ASVAB. Intelligence, yeah, oh, ASVAB, okay. Okay. intelligence. Uh, For those that don't know, the ASVAB is a test you take to see what what kind of job you would get in, in the military. So. And and apparently, I was too smart to be a police officer, <laughs> so they put me in, in the intelligence career field. Yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, so I did that for 10, 11 years. Oh. My wife's career took off, so I did the stay-at-home dad thing for a while. We're okay. just getting our family built. Yeah. Uh, bounced around, and then out of Tampa, Florida, she retired. Okay. And just to Fremont, Ohio. Wow. Yeah. Sounds kind of familiar with me moving from Tennessee up to Sandusky, Ohio after yeah. I retired. Wow, yeah. good old Ohio. So nice. So any uh, brothers or sisters or anything? Yeah, I've got one one younger brother. He's still in Arkansas. Uh, oh, okay. We landed in Arkansas in early nineties, and okay. that's when my dad got out of the military. Okay. And that's really where I grew up. Uh, okay. It's it's been a good couple of decades, and I've spent that time getting rid of my Arkansas draw, and now I'm going to spend the next decade getting my Midwest Ohio. Uh, yeah, accent. let's say I don't really hear that Arkansas draw that that probably should be there. I Depends guess. how tired I am. Yeah. Around, you know? yeah. <laughs> I get around some old folks. And yeah, it comes out. Okay, yeah. cool. So you got out of the military, yeah. and uh, then you got into photography. How did yeah. that come about? So it was 2018, pre-COVID. Okay. Um, you know, nowadays you have to preface that. Yes. But it was 2018, um, and I was out of the military. We were in the Destin, Florida area. So um, a lot of military bases around there in a small space. Yeah. And in looking for what career I was going to do after the military, I was trying to find something that was going to be lucrative, that could provide for the family, and then I could also um, engage with something that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I saw an opportunity. Right? I started doing the math, and I said, well... Military moves every two or three years. Yeah. So the real estate market is on this constant inventory cycle. Yeah. So there's never going to be a shortage of work. And what I did is I started getting into that and really, really enjoyed the real estate photography um, environment. Huh. And the unique thing about that area is that aside from having a high concentration of military homes mm -hmm. that are always for sale, yeah. it's also a very luxurious real estate market, really? meaning that it's on the coast, a lot of vacation properties, a lot of high-end yeah. real estate sure. that's there. Yeah. Um, so it was just the perfect storm for getting into that industry. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, but I mean, what kind of got you, is that just what got you into photography? Absolutely. Yeah. I, okay. I needed to find something. And like I said, my professional skill set was public speaking and yeah. research. Okay. Very hard to find something. Um, 
profitable yeah. with those skills. Yeah. Now they're they're really soft skills, right? It's it's not welding, it's not electrical or structural work. So so my skill sets really are soft skills. Yeah. So I had to find something that yeah, I had sure. sort of tangible and something yeah. that I was sort of skilled at, and that was what I landed on, and, and it ended up being very good for me in that area. Yeah. Of course, just like every other military family, you get good at something in one area, yeah. and you up and move. So yeah. I found that I was constantly having to reestablish a, a client base right. when I moved. That's tough. And gender aside, you know, I was a military spouse. Yeah. So I can okay. I can definitely appreciate the plight of the military spouse having to move professionally every few years yeah, and sure. reestablish yourself. So. so, okay, how how did you go about though trying? getting your foot in the door with, with doing real estate photography though? So, not unlike being a realtor, mm -hmm. getting a good solid client base is almost exclusively referral. Mm -hmm. You have to convince somebody to spend money on something they can do themselves. And that's a very hard sell. So at the very beginning, I had to, I had to establish a portfolio mm -hmm. in photography. Yeah. Basically a, a collection of work that says, this is what I can do for you. Yeah. So I started out doing it for free, um, <laughs> and what I did was actually a service that I provide now. So I had a friend that was a realtor, mm -hmm. and she had a listing that was uh, that was on the market for six months. It was just sitting there languishing, yeah. and the photos weren't really great. And I said, well, let me practice a little bit. Let me go in there and maybe take some, some better photos for you. Yeah. She ended up turning around and selling that home within the next month because of those photos. Nice. Um, and that good work... Yeah. military work ethic yeah. and just being a decent personable person right. helped me get my foot in the door yeah. and then the salesman aspect of it once you start talking to people you yeah. tell them hey look it's a benefit it's really going to benefit you right. and I didn't know that I had a, a salesman quality about me but yeah. that really helped me network yeah. and, and you really do as a salesman yeah. you really do have to keep pounding the pavement and yeah. hammering home what your value is right. so I was able to create a value, I was able to communicate that value, and I was able to consistently communicate that value. So yeah. that was what allowed me to, yeah. to flourish in that industry. Consistency is definitely key in this game. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, it can be tough sometimes, but you definitely have to do it. But yeah. you know, the whole thing with, with photography and real estate, I mean, that there is a, um, uh, an agent that works in Southern California, his name is Jordan Cohen. Mm -hmm. Now he's been tapped like the number one like worldwide real estate guy for Remax. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, and you know, I read his book because he's got a book out called The Agent's Edge. Okay. And it, it, it just details how he does his listings, you know, why he's so successful. So he has no problem sharing his, his knowledge and his tips and stuff with everyone so they could be equally successful. Yeah. But the one thing that he talked about is, is the photographs. And uh, he said, you know, what he does is that he Initially, he did do them by himself, but then he, he basically hire a professional photographer, and he goes in there, and he goes in the right time of day as well to make those properties stand out. Yeah. You know, he takes just the right shots, and he knows, he gives you just enough of, of the pictures and the listing to say, wow, this looks really incredible. You want to see more. That's exactly you want to see more? Right. Contact me, That's you can exactly see more. Right. Yep. And uh, I'm telling you, the guy is, I mean, he's killing it now. You know, he's... He's got you know celebrities and, and you know uh, foreign you know investors whoever to, to contact him. So I mean, he makes you know well over you know probably a hundred million a year easy. Oh, yeah. But you know Southern California homes aren't cheap anyway, so it's kind of easy to make that kind of money. But he's been doing it for so long. But that's one of his things that is the pictures. And other times I go through a listing that I'll if someone's interested in, and in the back of mind I'm thinking, man, who like who took these right. pictures because it doesn't appeal to me. So. Um, when I, you know, you got a hold of me and I saw what you did, I'm like, huh, interesting. Yeah. Because, you know, there's apps that we have available to us that kind of help us with that. But at the same time, that's added, you know, time that I've got to take to go do that when, you know, potentially I could have something else to do. So sure. it's always nice when you, when you have a system that you can do things for you. But, you know, pictures are, are a big deal yeah. with listings. Well, and there's a there's a couple aspects to that. You know, there, the technology now with, with our phones. You mm -hmm. and I can go into a home right now, and I actually do a photography class for realtors oh. to do uh, photographs on your phone, okay. but make them look good yeah. so that you can put them on the MLS. Yeah. So we've got the technology to do really good semi-professional products. Mm -hmm. um, the military is a great example. You delegate for specific skill sets. Uh, the, the civilian sector, you know, corporate world, having an assistant, right? Mm -hmm. Being a one-man show, 
to be successful is incredibly difficult and mm. takes so much time. Yeah. So we were discussing the, uh, the function of an assistant to answer emails, phone calls, so yeah. that you can focus on the specific thing that you're an absolute professional at. Mm -hmm. um, that's where photography comes in. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not unlike handling the, the paperwork for uh, a real estate transaction. You know, you don't have to be a professional photographer. You, mm -hmm. you may, may not know yeah. um, the right time of day, the right mm -hmm. equipment, the right, you know, there's a lot oh, that goes yeah. into that. Yeah. Um, just like, for example, uh, for sale by owner. Mm -hmm. Yes, a person is capable of selling a home on their own. Sure. But the benefit that a realtor brings mm -hmm. is that professional expertise. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing with a photographer. Mm -hmm. Sure. So how did you come up with the name F-Stop Photography? I'm sure there's probably got to be a technical reason behind this, but... There is and there isn't. So I've never been a, a sharp, witty, funny kind of person. <laughs> and I, I, I saw the opportunity... with you. <laughs> I saw the... And it, it's, it's a skill that I've had to develop. <laughs> but I saw the opportunity for, for sort of a double entendre. Right? Okay. So my very first iteration of this photography company in Florida, on the beach, mm -hmm. was called Flip Flop Photography. But it's catchy. It's, uh, it it kind of rolls off your tongue. Yeah, when sure. we moved to Fremont, Ohio, you know, flip flops don't fly up here in, in winter. Yeah. Right? So I had to find something a, a little yeah. bit different. Living in Fremont, being a photographer, there's a technical term in photography called an F stop. And that it's, mm -hmm. again, has to do with the configuration of your camera. Okay. But I wanted to, to highlight my area. I wanted to focus on Fremont, Sandusky County. So the double entendre is F stop being Fremont stop in Fremont. Uh, it, it's there. It okay. takes a little bit of explanation yeah. and maybe the right time of day to, right. to get the joke, but it's there and that's the reason behind the name. Interesting. I, the, the other thing is I've never been a fan of the putting my name on a business. Okay. No, I'll see a lot of John Smith photography or that right. sort of thing. And, yeah. um, I feel that that sort of pigeonholes you into doing one thing and I don't necessarily want to. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Oh, I can. Interesting. I mean, I knew there'd be some technical aspect, but that does make a lot of sense now that you bring it up. Sure. So let's say someone decides they want to hire you for photography work yeah. for their property. Sure. So can you walk us through what you have to go through, like other prep work and when you get to the place and all that stuff? Well, so <laughs> normally what will happen um, if you choose me to, to photograph your properties, what I'll do is I ask for the address first mm -hmm. okay? and a little bit of this is my background in that that intelligence mm -hmm. right? so I do a lot of research okay. um, so I'll look at the the address mm -hmm. and I look what's around mm -hmm. is it a heavily wooded area is mm -hmm. in the middle of a neighborhood is it in the middle of the city yeah. and that all goes into getting access to it where am I going to set up for pictures yeah so I do a lot of that background access I'll also ask for previous listings because I want to see the features of the home um, the next thing I'll ask for is, do you have a cursory listing um, write-out that you're going to be using? Okay. For example, brand new floors throughout. That's something that I'm going to want to know yeah, because sure. when I go sure. into the home, yeah. I make uh, a point to highlight those features. Right. So all this is done before I even leave the driveway mm -hmm. to go to the house. Okay. Um, outside of that, I get as much information as I can, and then I'll show up at the house. I like to shoot in the morning. Because the one of the benefits of the way that I operate, mm -hmm. if I can shoot in the morning, I can get the pictures um, mostly edited and done, and typically close a business or yeah. within 24 hours, okay. I can have those photographs to you as the agent. Yeah. That's phenomenal when somebody says, I'd like to sell my home. If you have a quick turnaround on the thing right. that people are going to see to decide whether they want to look at that right. start sure. the process, yeah. that's phenomenal for you as, Absolutely. A, as a realtor. Now, do you like prefer just as the sun's coming up or a few hours after sunrise or what's your preference on that? It honestly depends. depends. Okay. So uh, part of the thing that I'm looking at when I look at the home is which direction is it facing? Yeah. So most people don't really, I, I hesitate to say they don't care about the back side of the house, but boy, that front door, that mm -hmm. front door shot, what yeah. you're getting from the curb appeal, right. that's what you're really showing off. So yeah. is your home east facing, north facing? Are there trees in the way? Yeah. What is that going to look like? Yeah. And that's going to drive me. Typically, I like for workflow to go early in the morning. Okay. Um, I For real estate, I don't tend to do first thing in the morning or last thing in the evening because for real estate, those shadows are a little harsh. Sure. And it, yeah. it, it's hard to really show it off. Sure. But at the same time, you don't want to do it in the middle of the day right. when it's just hot yeah. and bare. No. Yeah. Um, 
we will do something called uh, twilight photography sometimes. And that's just because if you'll notice around here, especially coming off the lake, the clouds are coming in, the sun is really low, yeah. the sky is on <laughs> fire. Yeah. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. And Photoshop's yeah. a phenomenal platform, yeah. but you just can't duplicate that yeah. genuinely. Yeah. So every now and then, especially for the higher end listings, yeah. I will do multiple times a day because you oh. really want to showcase everything that that home has right. to offer. Sure. Um, up here, a lot of the, the draw of a home is where it's located. Is it close to a school? Does it have a phenomenal view of the lake? Are we on the river? Yeah. What is it about this house that's going to make it a home? Yeah. And that's my job is to visually capture that yeah. so that you yeah. can convey that to the sure. public. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a lot. Now, you also use drones as well? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I realized early on that yeah. that's a unique perspective. Yeah, that's absolutely. almost become standard for the industry. Right? Yeah. Now, is, I'm sure you do like like inside drone shots as well or not? I typically don't use my drone inside. Okay. Um, that's one of the capabilities that I'm trying to develop is the the video. Yeah. Um, in the last ten years, media has really transitioned from photos, quality photos, mm -hmm. introductory video, and now video is really the main staple for yeah. any sort of advertising right. media. Yeah. Um, pro product media. Mm -hmm. So that's something I'm trying to develop. Quite honestly, I just don't have the equipment for it right now. I've oh. got the eye and I've tried a, a handful of things. Okay. Exterior videos, yeah. definitely something I do. I do yeah. a lot of that okay. overview right. type video yeah. that I can do with the drone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, there is um, like there is like an app that that Remax uh, has or recommends. It's called I think Momenzo, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. But and basically, you know, you you use your phone, but you buy a uh, uh, what the heck is that piece of equipment called? A uh, like, like a gyroscope in a way, but mm -hmm. it helps just like stabilize. It helps stabilize the camera. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they kind of show you how you take certain shots with that inside, you know, so that yep. it, it just looks very visually appealing, basically. It is you know, very nice. but obviously there's some you know financial investment with that, and there's some training and learning to go along with it. Yeah. You know? But I think you know if a client sees what kind of great pictures that can come of their place for a listing, and then. You know when the realtor can tell them you know what their plan is for you know for promoting that listing you know yes. and it's all you know it's just more than the MLS you know there's you know there's the Facebook you know ads and you know how, how aggressive you're going to promote this thing and you know that couple with great pictures you know and you know what they see you know okay well if they say they want to make you know whatever the seller net sheet you know, they know how much they're gonna make off it if they're looking yeah. for a certain amount if you can present all that to them you know very professionally and it's pretty much almost, it's selling itself in a way. Absolutely. So having the right people in place for that, but that's kind of cool. Yeah. So how long does it take for you? So you just typically take one day to, to take photographs? Yeah, so not every house is the same. Yeah. Okay. And what I've been able to do over, over the last five years is really categorize 90% of our homes into three tiers. Okay. Now there's a basic entry level one, and that's for you know your your trailers, your small bungalow homes, the mm -hmm. more historic homes that are in town that are under a thousand square feet and might list for under a hundred thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Now for the sales aspect, that's not really super appealing. And what I found is that there's not a lot of energy put into those because for such a low list price, there's mm -hmm. not a lot of incentive financially. Mm -hmm. um, so for those, I offer basic. Um, Photographs with some drone coverage for that. Okay, uh, I'd say probably seventy-five percent of our real estate market falls into this next category. Okay, um, now that is going to be what you see on the MLS ninety percent of the time. Okay, those are going to be interior photos, exterior yeah. photos, uh, and and drone coverage. Okay, now, up here with Marblehead, Putin Bay. Mm -hmm. Our luxury area. I also do have luxury coverage, mm -hmm. and that does incorporate some of that video. You talked about the gyroscope. I have yeah. the capability to do that. Oh, okay. Um, but those really deserve to have a lot more time, mm -hmm. attention, yeah. and okay. product associated. With yeah, them. sure. Yeah. I was like, yeah, so I guess what's kind of like your ballpark cost with all that? If you don't right now? No, that's all right. So, again, having to reestablish client base and yeah. where you move, yeah. I'm having to find my my spot and mm -hmm. the reality of it is I'm still trying to prove myself in this area. Yeah. So the the ballpark number that I throw out to mm -hmm. people is about $150. Okay. 
Okay. Now what that is, is that's that middle tier that I was talking about. Okay. So I'll typically shoot first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll take, for that, you get about 30 to 45 pictures. Um, and that's both interior, exterior, okay. and the drone pictures. That's okay. to give you a good overview of the property. Yeah. Um, I'll go home, I'll edit that in my home office, yeah. and then I provide you with two different types of formats. Okay. So I give you the big, really great, high detailed images. Okay. But then what I also do is I pre-size those for the MLS. Now for those of you that don't know, the Zillow, the Trulia, all those places that you look at online for photos, pull from the MLS. Yeah, right. And that MLS, being an online database, has a limitation on the size of the, the files, the pictures, okay. that you can upload. Gotcha. So, you can't take this big, huge, really high density, high quality photo okay. yeah. and put 60 of those <laughs> against the house. Mm -hmm. um, so to make it easy for you, instead of you having to do that, mm -hmm. I just deliver it to you right, at, right away. And that typically will come at the close of business. I can typically do that in three to four hours for oh, wow. a standard size home. Okay. Um, and again, that gives you the abil ability to get your photos yeah. and list them the same day oh. if you need to. Gotcha. That, that's very, I mean, the efficiency behind that is great. I mean, yes. and you know, I think, you know, hopefully, you know, a, a client can, can appreciate, the, you know, when, when you're very efficient with what you do, you know, yeah. you obviously don't get the promise that you can't keep, you know, but uh, yeah, great photos, you know, and, you know, make sure it's, you know, the property is described, you know, as well as you can be, you know, the best light and stuff. Yep. And then, yeah, make sure it's promoted as well as possible too. Um, I know that like with, uh, our uh, broker Ellen, I've taken her dad's place that I did an open house for, and you know I used Canva a lot, and I took you know pictures that from from you know her MLS listing basically, or I should say Remax.com because I, I couldn't pull pictures off the MLS person for some reason, and uh, I go into Canva, I put the picture on there, and then you know I use like some text boxes in there. You know, and describe you know the room itself. You know whether it's a cozy living room or whatever they've done to it. You know, put music behind it, and also animate it in a way that looks visually appealing. You know, yeah. I keep it to usually like a minute or less, yep. and then I'll take it, and then you know I'll either post it as like a, a, a Facebook reel, you know, mm -hmm. and or you know a Facebook story perhaps, you know, with that's got a video collage in it, with some decent music, you know, and of course you know all the important factors of the property put in there, you know, the address, you know, what how many bedrooms, baths, you know, the list price, you know, where the yeah. MLS number is and that fact that it's her listing, you know, so I gave her credit, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I mean, people do look at that, you know, I'm, we're still trying to get that sold for everything, but I'm trying to, you know, uh, get better with, with the social media, you know, and, and with the technology, yeah. just to make myself feel like, oh yeah, this guy kind of knows what he's doing, hopefully, you know. Okay. So, um, now, how, when did you restart your business here in Fremont? So I just restarted this in, oh, what are we in now, almost December. Mm -hmm. I just started this recently, I'd say probably October, early October. And how has business been so far? So oh. the photography business is not unlike a lot of other industries post-COVID. Okay. It's very yeah. saturated. Oh. Um, yeah. I'm finding that I am competing with people who have been here for years. Yeah, sure. Right? Yeah. Um, and that, that really is part of the... The dynamic of moving around and, and moving yeah. into the business is yeah. trying to re-establish a client base. <laughs> yeah. And I've never been the type of business owner that thinks I'm in competition with, with these other business okay. owners. It really is and can be a collaborative environment. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to make sales to yeah. pay your bills. Right. Um, so that's that's been the most difficult part is getting in front of Realtors and saying no, I, I know I'm another face. I know I'm another name. Yeah. And I have this commodity that you're already used to Yeah, um, But trying to explain look my quality is better my timeliness is better mm -hmm. whatever that attribute is for, yeah. for you as a realtor. Yeah um, I, I Get into discussion with realtors all the time your history of listing photos. Yeah, it's really your unseen business card Sure. As a home buyer, yeah, um, and I've you know in the military I've bought I, I think a total of five or six homes okay. over the last ten years, okay. so quite a few. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed in our home search is that I would always look at these photos, and you mentioned one that maybe wasn't as great, yeah. And I would look at that realtor, and that realtor is trying to tell me, "Hey, let me let me sell this home for you." Well, I go and I look at some of these homes, and these are. This is my home. This is what my kids grew up in. This is where my memories mm -hmm. are made. Yeah. I don't necessarily want it to be presented like that. Yeah. 
a boy, this bright, shiny realtor <laughs> yeah. with all these wonderful homes. Yeah. Um, that's the person that I might go towards. And that's yeah. what I try to, to convey to them is you can make any house a home if you show it properly. And sure. that's what people are buying is the yeah. potential for a home. Sure. They don't want a commodity. They yeah. want a potential future. Sure. So do you just do you photography for realtors and, and, and property or do you venture into other things, you know, like, like family portraits and things yeah. like that? Or? So I started out in real estate photography and what I tried to do when I started back here was get into what I'll call people pictures. Okay. Uh, so that's the, the portraiture, yeah. the, the family, that, yeah. that type of stuff. And what I found is while I have the ability to do it, I tend to have a knack for what's called editorial photography, so storytelling. The, oh, the yeah. types of photos that you would see maybe in magazines yeah, or sure. National Geographic, yeah. not to elevate myself too much, mm -hmm. but, but that type, that yeah, style. Sure. Um, and that's not something that most people are exposed to mm -hmm. and familiar with. Mm -hmm. So breaking into that has been mm -hmm. uh, difficult, but that's more yeah. of the, the art and the enjoyment side of sure. it, whereas hopefully the real estate aspect is gonna be more of my income generation. Right. So besides the photography business, is there anything else that you do for income or that's getting you by? Not really. Right now, um, again, moving around and especially being in a, a new town, yeah. it's been real hard to, uh, to land something concrete. Yeah. And this is, this is where I'm putting a lot of my eggs okay. right now just right. because I, I see the option. I have yeah. the foundation. Yeah. It's just getting the, the tires to stick yeah. so that car can get yeah, on the road. No, I hear you there. Yeah. I'm with you on that. So you live in Fremont now. So what are some of the things that you like about the Fremont area? So I grew up in Arkansas, yeah. uh, in a small town not too dissimilar from Fremont. Mm -hmm. And what I tell people all the time is when we were looking at op options of places that we wanted to raise our kids, mm -hmm. because that's what we were looking at. We weren't mm -hmm. looking at where we wanted to move. It was solely based around our kids, seven, eight, nine at the time, mm -hmm. where they were gonna grow up. Yeah. Um, it was a, a family atmosphere. It was a small town. Everybody was nice. And, and everybody refers to each other. Oh, you're selling your house? I know a guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, you need this pipe fixed? Mm -hmm. I know a guy. Right. And that's what I really like about small towns. It's, mm -hmm. it very, the word community gets thrown around, but it really is very communal. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the reason I decided to, although I tried people pictures, that's the reason I decided to shift back to real estate is because there's an opportunity there to really make that community shine. Yeah, uh, right. I, I know they're trying to grow and develop themselves uh, economically mm -hmm. and to bring people in, just like in a home, mm -hmm. you really have to show it off. Mm -hmm. um, sure. So I, I want to put a lot of effort to the community, both yeah. the business side sure. and the real estate side to yeah. make people want to come to Freedom. <laughs> I can understand that. Yeah. Um, as a real estate guy too, I mean, part of the reason why, you know, I, I do these interviews is so that people in the community can learn about others that I like either work in or service the area, which I obviously do. So I guess it kind of leads me to the question. So if you're still, have you found anyone to work with in, in the Sandusky area at all or no? In, or have, I, I have, I have a couple of projects okay. that are on the books right now. Okay. Um, I tend to be discreet with those. Okay. They're, they're newer businesses, and okay. I don't want to steal their thunder from, okay. hey, we're, we're opening up. Yeah. And I do okay. have a couple of okay. projects that I'm working okay. on that are, that are very exciting. And those yeah. tend to be on the commercial side, sure. the okay. people pictures, but they're yeah. more of the business focused okay. type photos. Okay. Now, real estate, I would absolutely love to start diving into the area up here. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, getting started, and a lot of it is getting out and getting my name known sure. so that when yeah. somebody says, hey, I, I need a guy. You, you mentioned how I got started. That's really how my business started picking up in Florida was somebody's normal photographer wasn't available. Mm -hmm. Man, I've got this listing and I promised them this weekend. Is yeah. there any chance you can come by? Yeah. Well, yeah, and absolutely. Clutch, sure, yeah. And you just need that one time, yeah, that absolutely. one start yeah. uh, to get that ball rolling, so. Yes, you do. Sometimes just that one or it's a few, just depends. Right. So yeah. yeah, no, I totally understand that. Yeah. Um, I mean, when I was doing my EMS job, you know, we were stationed out of the Sandusky County Airport right there oh, yeah. near Fremont, yep. you know, and uh, so Fremont Airport was too far away from us, you know, yeah. and so, you know, um, I made a, had to, you know, make a few 
trips to pick up some patients at that went to Fremont Airport instead of the you know our airport and everything. So, but I'm familiar with the Fremont area, you know, and kind of we flew over it all the time, you know, when we're heading out to Toledo and stuff like that. So. It's hard to miss. I, I yeah. definitely there's a big difference between the Sandusky Airport and the, the Fremont Airport. Yeah, I mean they're they're close enough where it's like you know you want to make sure that you put the right coordinates and you don't miss it. Oh yeah. Um, but no, Fremont's not a, a being a bad area. I mean it's kind of cool at least from the aerial point of view when oh, we yeah. fly over and stuff. Yeah. And being from, now that I'm in Sandusky, you know, um, I know Fremont is, is probably trying their best to probably, you know, to, to promote themselves, you know, as a great town. Um, and Sandusky is doing quite well for itself too. So um, I won't, I guess I won't plug it in too much, but <laughs> I try not to overshadow Fremont. But I mean, obviously, you know, we're known for Cedar Point here. Absolutely. Have you ever been to Cedar Point yet? I got to go one time okay. last year. It was, I've never been a roller coaster guy. Okay, all right. But, it was a good time. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've been here since 2013 and Sandusky in itself ha has really grown. The downtown area yes. has improved a lot. Yep. Um, they put a lot of time, you know, and, and money into it. And it's just, you know, a great place to visit, whether, you know, you're, you're a vacationer or you're actually you live here. It's just, it is great. But yep. hopefully, you know, Fremont can, can, you know, bring itself up to where you would expect it to be or anyone else yeah. would as well. So let's hope that happens. And I really think that it is. I, I know the, the leadership there is really trying to find the hook for Fremont. They, mm -hmm. I know they want to be sure. the center of excellence for something. There's yeah. a lot of opportunity there. You yeah. know, it, it may not be a, a Cedar Point hub yeah. and it may not be a Toledo, yeah. but it's close enough to all that yeah. stuff. And I think if they capitalize on that mm -hmm. and show it off to make yeah. people want to come sure. there, boy, it's a, it, so here's a funny thing. This is our retirement home. Okay. We moved here to raise kids okay. and to retire. Gotcha. Okay. And I think a lot of the population there is. Okay. Um, and if they show it off as this is a great place to retire, mm -hmm. nice small community, yeah. nice quiet place to, to be. Yeah. There's there's a lot of potential there to draw a lot of people sure. in. I make it a point too, where I think at least once or twice a week I will try to you know advertise Sandusky as being you know your your next relocation, you know, uh, oh, yeah. destination, basically, you know, sure. and try to highlight all the areas we have. So that's something else that I try to do for the community, along with these, you know, these interviews as well, just yeah. to try to, you know, um, just help people learn about others, you know, and what they do and stuff. So, so then photography, uh, what do you like to do in your downtime? As a dad, <laughs> I, I do a lot of stuff with the kids. It's funny, um, growing up, my dad really was into fishing. Okay. And I always went along, but I enjoyed the boat ride. You know, I enjoyed oh. being by the water. So I didn't really get into fishing. Okay. Uh, when we were in the Destin area, I was trying to find something to do with my, my son. And at the time, I think he was four or five. And I said, well, let's try this fishing thing out. Mm -hmm. Pun intended, he was hooked immediately. Oh. So he really got into it. And I had okay. to teach myself how to fish right. so yeah. that I could keep him engaged. Right. And that's, that's sort of what we have um, begun doing together. Okay. Me personally, uh, I was never into sports growing up. I was a, believe it or not, I used to be real skinny and fit. Uh, I was a cross country runner. Oh. And then in college and in the military, I picked up uh, a passion for rugby. Uh, played really? on the Air Force rugby team for oh. a couple of years. It was okay. a blast. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the other things about being in a small town here is they don't really have access to that. I think there's a, a rugby team in Toledo. Okay. Um, so if any of you guys need a <laughs> plus 40 rugby player, let me know. But uh, yeah, so in my, I, I do a lot of stuff outside. So we, okay. we were very lucky to find a large acreage property in town. Okay. And that afforded me the opportunity to be outside, to garden, to mm -hmm. you know keep busy mm -hmm. uh, while also raising the family and, and mm -hmm. working. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, you have a multi-acre property from what I've read. Yeah. So you like to do a lot of that. And then you also have well, some chickens as well, I think. Sure do. Yeah, that's the start of the, the farm. <laughs> oh boy. Chickens. My wife decided she wanted uh, chickens last year. Okay. We, we got them and they've they've been doing great, flourishing. Okay. And got okay. them just after the whole chicken egg shortage thing, okay. so we missed our million dollar opportunity. Yeah. But no, it's been great and it's, uh, it's rewarding to see the kids have an investment in that sure. type of thing. Yeah. To just have, even an inkling of self-sustainment, it's, yeah. it's a neat feeling. It is neat, especially yeah. with all the technology and stuff the kids are into these days. Getting oh, down yeah. to basics is is quite essential, I think. Is, I, yeah. And I've got two teenage stepdaughters right now, and uh, yeah, just seeing you know how 
how they're going through life. I'm just like, wow, you know, a lot different than when we went through for sure. Yes, it is. Um, I mean, some of it's great with what they have access to, but at the same time, it's like, you know, you do, should, or get back to some of the basics, you know, yeah. in life as well. I mean, and they're I exposed to a lot. You gotta yeah. remember they're still kids. Yeah, absolutely. So other than photography and of course, sure. like doing your downtime, yeah. so um, what are some of your goals? I mean, as far as with the photography business, I mean, is, is there an end goal to that or? Well, obviously I'd, I'd like to be able to make a, a living with mm -hmm. it, to be able sure. to do this full time. Yeah. I really do enjoy it. And I'm, I'm a believer that if you can find that job that you enjoy, mm -hmm. boy, that's the thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I've, I've got an altruistic goal, I guess. I've, I've mentioned that I, I enjoy the real estate photography. Mm -hmm. And I have a belief that every home deserves to be shown off well, mm -hmm. whether it's that mm -hmm. sub hundred thousand dollar listing mm -hmm. that I mentioned, mm -hmm. um, it deserves to be shown in a really good light. Right. Now, I think for the Fremont area, I would very much like to be the person that highlights the area. Mm -hmm. I have the, the drive, I have yeah. the, the vision to do that. Yeah. And once I can get established, then I can kind of make my, my pitch to the powers that be mm -hmm. that we should do this yeah. as a community. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I just want to, to be established. I want to have a good career. Mm -hmm. and if somebody in town knows my name, that's fantastic. Yeah. Everybody in a small town wants to, to be known mm -hmm. and have, have sure. a guy for a thing. Yeah. Um, no, just shift into a, a nice slower gear have a good steady pace of work yeah. and do good quality work for people. That's plan. Yeah. What's your message for, let's say, future entrepreneurs out there that want to get into, into the business, any kind of business? Oh, research. <laughs> research and have a plan. Mm -hmm. um, and what I mean is everybody wants to be a, a star football player. Everybody wants to be a rock and roll star. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, my daughter just recently said, I want to be an interior designer. Right. She's 13. She's since changed her mind, but it necessitated a conversation. <laughs> yep. Right. It was all right. Well, what do you think that is? What is it you like about it? And yeah. at that age, you're still passionate about the the shiny aspects yeah. of it. All yeah. right. Well, what you need to do is, and it's sort of a academic discussion of how do you think that person got there? How do you think that process starts? And then you work your way backwards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you, and then when you get to step one, it's study, mm -hmm. get a degree, mm -hmm. get yourself set before you jump off a, a cliff, for right. example. Yeah. I would not have been able to do what I'm doing right now mm -hmm. if my wife and I were financially stable enough. Now that's a, a cresting wave. At some point I need to be able to contribute that income mm -hmm. back in there, but sure. it's nice to be able to have a, yeah. a safety net when yeah. you jump into oh, yeah. something like this. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. prepare, study, and then dive in with both feet. Hmm. It's good advice. I mean, real estate is kind of the same way too. I mean, it's expensive. I hate to use the word hobby to get into, but hopefully, if it's something that you want to do, it's expensive to get into it yeah. um, and, and to maintain it with you know MLS fees and things like that. But if it's something you enjoy and really want to do, then obviously you know go at it you know full force and, and make the most of it. So, but they do say that if if you are loving what you do, then are you really working at, That's right. at your job? You yeah. know. So yeah, I mean. You just know what your passions are and just follow them. But, you know, great advice for entrepreneurship. Yep. How do you want to be uh, remembered after you're gone? Like I said, I want to be that guy. Um, usually that's a negative connotation, but what I mean is in the small town sense. Okay. Oh, man, do you remember Bob? Boy, he was really great at putting up siding or, or whatever the thing is. Mm -hmm. um, as long as people think of me as doing a good job mm -hmm. and being a decent person, yeah. I'm set. You know, if I can make my family happy, yeah. keep them going, yeah. and be looked at in a positive light, mm -hmm. then I'm set. Can't ask for anything more than, no, no that's like the, the magic uh, ingredients right there. <laughs> Not reaching higher. Than, <laughs> you know. Okay. Well, anything you want to promote about your company, feel free to go and do so. I mean, how they can get contact you, your, your website. and Yeah, your sure. So I do have a, a website, uh, fstopimagery.com. I'm very active on, on Facebook just because that's where a lot of the people are mm -hmm. uh, that I'm trying to reach, the realtors. Mm -hmm. um, but my, my hook mm -hmm. to realtors is that I'm local, responsive, and timely. As we talked about, typically 24 hours is what your turnaround time is going to be. Um, my background is in luxury real estate, whether it's your double wide trailer home or your vacation spot in Marblehead. Um, I 
can accommodate pretty much anything and it's all fairly custom order so i do have a a boilerplate thing that we usually do you, know, mm -hmm. you get your handful of photos and the drone stuff but i'm telling you if you're going to list a home for half a million dollars or more you really want a lot of time and attention mm -hmm. paid to that sure. um, and the guy that's giving it to you for a discount at 100 bucks is probably not going to be the one that's going to sell your half million dollar <laughs> million dollar property mm -hmm. the way that you want to be represented so mm -hmm. um, true yeah, I, I'm a team player, and just like in the, the military, my job was to support people doing the work, and that's how yeah. I view myself here, yeah. is supporting yeah. the people doing the work. Right. I, I just tee up that golf shot for you. It's <laughs> yeah. to right? take your driver yeah. and, and two putt it in. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so is there a uh, like email address or phone number they can contact yeah, you? Yeah, sure. My email address is joe at fstopimagery.com, okay. and my phone number is 571 three four four nine seven four one that's my personal phone number or, and i've got text message email all that stuff on there so i'm pretty ridiculously responsive <laughs> yeah. I, I try not to be as responsive in the evening when the kids are at home sure stuff like that yeah um but i do have time built into my schedule yeah but okay it will not go more than two or three hours yeah. before i get back yeah i am pretty much the same way i think during yeah. the day you know it's the phone is by me and unless i'm you know at a showing or at a meeting I try to be as responsive as well. Absolutely. At some point, you gotta draw the line and say, okay, you know, plug in that, that family time. Oh yeah. And that you know, and then people will learn hopefully to respect that, and then you'll get back to them, you know, as reasonably possible. So yeah, I mean, that's 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 just the marks of, of, of good business, I think. You know, and keeping yourself sane in the way too. So a little bit of experience as an older adult. Yeah, I mean, you can go head first and you know, and just block out everything else, but you gotta find the balance in life. And then right. with, with family and for me, you know, a little exercise on the side to keep keep my endorphins running, you know, and, and, yeah. and getting you know, keeping you know, a calm mind as much as possible. So yeah. Well, Joe, I do appreciate you uh, stopping by. Thank you very much uh, for having me. So, Joe Barrier here with F Stop Imagery. So, if you are a realtor, you know, uh, either in this area or in Fremont or something, and you need a photographer, give him a call, get with him, and see what he can do for you. I mean, I'm probably going to talk to him about, about it after this as well because that's something that uh, I could definitely use since I may have a few listings coming up, uh, hopefully. Um, but as far as on the uh, uh, park bench, uh, uh, website or park bench series I was talking about before. Um, so with the park bench, basically I interview uh, small, cool, and amazing small business owners, uh, interesting people, uh, industry professionals, nonprofits, and uh, anyone that really lives in and works in the Sandusky area or services the Sandusky area. Um, I, I interview for, for free, and then I put you on the website. And um, once that's done, you can also establish a, a, a backside or back waiting to, to do uh, set up your own uh, business homepage on there from what I understand correctly. So, um, and in return, I just ask that if you know of anyone that's in the market to buy or sell real estate, um, just kind of if you send a referral my way, that'd be great. Um, so it's kind of a, that's how the <laughs> tit for tat, I guess you want to call it works, but that's all I ask in return. So uh, it's kind of a promotion for you and a small promotion for me. And uh, as far as the real estate plug-in, uh, Yes, if you are in the market to buy or sell, um, I am more than happy to to help you. Um, as he, <laughs> Joe, so uh, greatly detailed, um, I do genuinely care about uh, the people that I work with. Um, I would definitely, you know, give you my best effort and be, uh, you know, completely transparent with you, honest, and everything. And you can definitely count on me to guide you through the entire uh, process, whether it's buying or selling, you know, up to the end. And uh, I'm very responsive, you know, with with, with getting back to you. So. Uh, yeah, that's kind of how the whole thing. So Parkbench, it's at uh, parkbench.com forward slash Sandusky. If you want to visit the website um, to see other interviews, or you can you can also uh, you know uh, click on, on the link there to uh, request an interview that way or contact me at uh, stephen.ham at remax.net as well, and I will get back to you as well. We can set something up. So uh, uh, that's pretty much it for that. So, Joe, once again, thank you for stopping by and being a part of this. Um, hope you all have a great day. Until the next interview, take care. Um, Keep a positive attitude and keep reaching for those goals and uh, just uh, never stop and make it happen. We'll talk to you later. See ya. Thanks, Sandusky. <laughs>